So to that effect, I do want to kind of call out and recognize a couple people um, that are here today uh, to honor some of those partnerships uh, through the years. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Bill Burrow, our city manager. Bill, thank you for being here. I also want to recognize uh, Mr. Chad Adudel. Chad is the market CEO of St. Vincent here in Arkansas and my boss. Also want to recognize Mr. Bart Newman. Bart Newman sits on our system board, longtime board member. <laughs> and also recognize Bruce Jones, who's the chairman of our local board here in Hot Springs. Someone I for sure cannot leave out. I uh, want to say a special recognition uh, for Sister Teresa. Sister Teresa was our last Sister of Mercy who actively was rotating and serving in this hospital. Please give her a very good <laughs> It's a, it's a really big group in the room. I'm kind of scanning in the room. Uh, if, 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 I don't, if I didn't call your name out, uh, please uh, don't take offense to that. But, but you know, having such a great turnout of this and so many people in here uh, today, uh, again, I think it's just an, a great example of the collaboration and the partnerships that have made this one of the strongest health systems uh, in all of the state of Arkansas. Uh, we've been here for over 130 years. Uh, we are going to do everything possible to be here for another 130 plus years uh, serving this community. So thank you again. Um, and now I'm going to pass uh, over to our mission leader, uh, Michael Miller, who's going to uh, discuss a little bit more in detail um, about our time capsule. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Dr. Ross says, my name is Michael Millard, and I, I have the privilege of being the leader of, of our mission here in, in Hot Springs and in the market. Uh, it is a re it really makes me feel good to see all of y'all here today because this is a this is an exciting moment. This is this is one of those moments that really connects our past to our present and to our future because it represents so much about where we came from and where we came from dictates what we're doing now which tells us what we need to keep doing and how do we do it better as we go forward so just very briefly as, as dr ross mentioned our history goes back to the arrival of the sisters of mercy in hot springs in september of 1888 and as the story goes, they showed up here after having been called to be here, to, to open and operate the hospital. They showed up with one dollar in their pocket to make it work. And guess what? They made it work. And they made it work really, really well. They set the foundation for what would become now 136 years of service to our community. And we're just getting started. So to them, to the Sisters of Mercy, to Sister Teresa, to Sister Carol Ann, thank you for being here. Thank you for the service that you have given, the life that you have dedicated, not only to St. Joseph's and now St. Vincent's, but to this community, to all of the people that you have served over the years. Thank you. And I think they deserve it. It is really all about service. And as Dr. Ross said too, it's about the partnerships that we have formed in the community over the years. We have representatives from, from the school, and I, I will get it wrong, it's the Arkansas School of Math and Sciences and Art, right? Is it, it, it okay, I got it right, look at that. <laughs> They, you know, when, when, when we moved the hospital from the Whittington location over to this location, uh, I, fortunately, very fortunately, the city of Hot Springs made it possible to, to open that school over there and to use that facility. And they've used it since then up until just this past year. And, and that has been a real blessing to the, the community, to all of the students that's, that have been there. It is, it is an indication of, of, again, that partnership that, was, that has been formed over the years. 
And now, unfortunately, I, I, I will be honest to say, it's time for that building to come down. And it will be a very sad moment to see when, when that building is no longer there. But the spirit of the people that started it, that built it, will always remain. And that's what's really important. And that includes the, the, the future with ASMSA and what they're going to be able to do now with that property as they go forward. So a little bit about the time capsule. Uh, when, when the building over on Whittington was constructed, the very first thing, one of the first things that they did when they laid the foundation was to lay the cornerstone, which is over here in the corner. And that was very traditional, very, very typical of, uh, of construction at that time, that there would be a ceremony to lay the cornerstone, which very literally was the corner of the building, and, and marked the beginning and the strongest part of that building. It would be upon what everything else was, was built. And, and it was blessed, and inside of it was put that little box. And in that little box is a, a, a snapshot of time. That cornerstone was laid on December 6th, 1927. And so that box did not see the light of day until about a month or so ago when we took the cornerstone out of the building and found the box. So what, what that is, is that is actually a message, a message from the folks that were operating the hospital, that were serving in the hospital, and a message potentially from the community that it served. Have no idea what's in it. We have not peaked, I promise. <laughs> We've had, there's been a lot of people that have come by my office and said, have you peaked, have you peaked? I'm like, nope, I haven't peaked. So, It'll be a surprise to see what's in there. I promise you it will not be Al Capone's vault. There really is something in there. And we know that. It rattles. So it'll be very, very exciting to see, to see what's in there. Uh, and I'm very glad that all of y'all are going to be able to, to share uh, in this moment. So very quickly now, uh, I, I would just like to say a quick prayer, and then we will get on with that. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day and all the blessings that you have given us in this life. We thank you for the Sisters of Mercy. We thank you for the calling that you have placed upon them and that you have placed upon all of us who have carried on in their tradition. Gracious Father, we ask you to continue to bless the efforts of all of those who work here in this hospital, of all of those who are connected with this hospital, and for our mission our mission to serve the poor and the vulnerable, for those who are in most need of our care. And the gracious Father, you will keep us focused always on being the hands and feet of the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, bless this place so that in another 136 years, there will be those who will look back upon us and say, thank you, thank you for all the work that they did. All of this we pray in the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Teresa Lambert. I have the privilege to be the Vice President of Patient Care and Assistant Chief Nursing Officer at this facility. I have been in this ministry for 38 years. So my class me to do... Thank you. <laughs> little bit of like a co-worker legacy so I'm going to share my story I was actually born at the old hospital I tell people I was not I'm not that old the sisters kept me till I was about two years old and put me to work so I'm only about 40, okay? but I really was I was born on the sixth floor at the old hospital and then uh, when I was 12 years old I'll try to stop crying my grandfather who lived with us since, uh, since as long as I could remember who was my very best friend in the world and I was his first grandchild, so you know I was special. Uh, passed away at the old St. Joseph. He was in the ICU. And I made a vow at that point that I would never set foot back in that building. Because they would not let me see him. There were restrictions, age restrictions for visitation. For ICU were 13, and I was 12. They didn't let me in. I didn't get to say goodbye. So I didn't go back in that building 
for, for a long time. I finished nursing school. I went to work at St. Michael's in Texarkana and worked there for four years. When it came time for my husband and I to move back home, I came to Hot Springs. I went to National Park and I applied for a job. They hired me. I went back to St. Michael's. Gave my notice and my director of nursing at that point did exit interviews. And she called me and she said, Teresa, where are you going? I told her we're moving back home and I'm going to work at National Park. And she looked at me and said, no, you're not. And I'm like in my early 20s, I'm newly married. I got to work. Yeah, I'm going to work somewhere. She said, why won't you go? Why didn't you go to St. Joseph? And I told her my story about my papa. And she said, Teresa, sometimes the hardest things to do are to go to places where you can make a difference. So she picked up the phone. She called Pat Tidwell. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Said, I've got a nurse you need to hire. And Ms. Tidwell hired me over the phone. So July 6, 1987, I started my orientation at St. Joseph. First time I've been back in that building since my grandfather passed away. I never forget Sister Mary Rowland walked into the, to the room and she said, how many of y'all are here for a check? <laughs> if you raise your hand, she told you to leave. Thank goodness I didn't. <laughs> I, was, I knew, I'd work with sisters in Texas and I don't know, don't tell them you're there for a check. But that, that started my ministry here at St. At St. Joseph, St. Vincent. And we've seen a lot of changes. I mean, a lot of us in this room were here when we moved to this building. We had the convoy going down Central Avenue with the National Guard. I was the nurse who took the first patient on med surge. When we moved the first one out here, I remember his name. I remember the room we put him in. I remember the first time I took care of acute leukemic, my favorite patients, to take care of. I remember some of the discussions I've had with other people that have been here forever. Some of the people out there that have worked alongside me and the, the things that we've seen change from almost being sold to a for-profit, that one I almost went to work for, and then having our name change from St. Joseph to St. Vincent, and I still have patients when I round call this hospital St. Joe. So we're very proud to be St. Vincent, but that St. Joe legacy will always live in this, in this building and in the people that are here. So just a little bit of my story. I am very, very, very honored to serve in the role that I have here, and I have been able to affect some changes, hopefully, and make nursing better than it was when I got here. I know nurses take care of a lot sicker patients than I ever did, and I am honored every day to stand among them as their leader. So thank y'all for coming, we appreciate it. Thank you for the memories that I've gotten here, and thank you for the, the letting me serve in this ministry. It's the moment of truth. <laughs> If, if y'all, if you want to come up here with me, please. I want to see this. So, <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna see. Yes, Sister Teresa, please. Uh, this is a very high tech piece of equipment here. That we're gonna Amber, I told him no coworker injuries. Yeah, no no coworker injuries. Okay. So this, this Clay, I should say thank. Where's Clay? Clay. Clay. Clay Bowen, who who is our, our maintenance our main maintenance guy. I don't know exactly what your title is, but you're he's the main maintenance guy. He's the one. Number one has been keeping an eye on me to make sure that I didn't peek. But number two figured out how to open this. If I have trouble opening it, I'm going to be yelling for his help. So we're going to see how this how this goes. Yeah, we need to have a drum roll. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right, this is good. Oh, gloves. gloves. Yes, I forgot the gloves. I want to do... I want to do right. This stuff hadn't seen the light of day in 97 years. <laughs> What we'll do is, as we take as we take the items out, we'll kind of lay it out on the table, and then at the end, we'll let people come up and and kind of and take a look at them. And the plan is that we are going to put these on display. Um, so, oh wow, okay, nice. I 
some of this stuff you're just going to have to they have to come up and see. This is yeah, a lot of this is in Latin. This looks like it's from the Vicar General uh, of the diocese, um, and uh, it is it is a yeah, it's in Latin. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been way too long since I've studied, but it looks like these may be, these are uh, signatures of some of the folks that were probably representatives of the sisters. Oh, yeah. Several of the priests from uh, Hot Springs and Little Rock, uh, someone from St. Louis. Yeah, very nice. Somebody from Milwaukee. Does that say Milwaukee? No. I'm not sure what that says. Milwaukee. Chicago. Yeah. I bet some of these are the sisters that were, maybe, do you think? Um, the, the, the really good, the good news is it's in pristine condition. Wow. Yeah. So, so there, was, there was no damage done. So we'll just kind of lay things out here. Oh, wow. The telephone book. Nineteen twenty seven. That's okay, that's awesome. For for any of you who are of the younger set, this is a telephone book. We used to keep these so we knew how to call people. On a parking lot. Yes, on a on a parking lot. Um It's a bill. <laughs> Pay upon receipt. Doggone it. I'm the one that. Uh, oh. oh wow, this is this is from the from O'Connor Coomerley Company, heating and ventilating engineers and contractors. Um, the, uh, the, the, the company who has the contract for the plumbing, heating, ventilation, and refrigeration on this building, which amounts to $108,000, was established June 30th, 1927, and is the successors of blah, 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 blah. That's, this is interesting. This is, these are based, this is the, the folks that put in the heating and air and the, and the plumbing and everything. Um, and you know, it's probably worth mentioning that when they built the building uh, over on Whittington in 1927, it was the first hospital in the state of Arkansas that cost over a million dollars. Oh, deed of trust. Here's the deed for the building. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to go through all those pages. Those are kind of fragile. This is what I was really hoping that we'd find. One of the things I was really hoping that we would find, the newspaper. Again, I'm not going to open it up too much. What's, what's the headline? Let's see. Let's see, let's see what the headline says. Uh, well, it's not open to the front. It's not the front. Uh, new spring hats for sale. Three dollars and fifty-five cents. Three dollars and fifty-five cents. That's for the snappy, attractive style. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is the yes. It's open to the to the article. Lay cornerstone this afternoon. Yeah. Nice. And here's a, this is from the St. Louis Daily Globe Democrat from Sunday, March 20th, 1927, talking about the, the, uh, the new hospital laying the, laying the cornerstone uh, for the hospital in St. In St. Joseph's in Hot Springs. So they were talking about us in St. Louis. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so, I'm so happy. It's a dollar. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I obviously knew that history back then. I'm, I'm, I am now a happy camper. That, that is, yeah. That is. That, it it really it really kind of looks like play money. 
compared to yeah, it's a silver certificate. Yeah, it's a silver certificate. Yeah. Probably very valuable. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know everybody. Everybody's watching, Michael. And here is oh, this is from Archbishop Glennon. Oh wow. From St. Louis. Yeah. The undersigned generously subscribed for beds at ten dollars a week for five years to supply funds to pay the interest on an issue of $500,000 of bonds, the proceeds of which covers, uh, the proceeds of which were used to, to build this building. So these are all of the people that basically helped to build that building. And Archbishop Glemons is, Glemons is the first is the first one on the list. That's, yeah. And this is Sister Philomena. It's a list of the sisters. Yeah, this we were talking about earlier. We 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 were having trouble coming up with the names of the sisters that actually worked and ran the hospital at that time. Uh, this is Mary Bernard. So, yeah. You know that marble uh, holy fountain out in front of the chapel? Mm -hmm. That was donated to her. It's got her name on it. Oh, wow. Okay. She was the, I bet she was the CEO. Uh, I bet so. That, see, there we go. That's, that's good. Student nurses. Oh. Names of the student nurses, the seniors, the intermediates, and the juniors. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that count. So <laughs> it's Jeff. He's always in trouble. <laughs> that over there. Oh, a. Uh, oh, this is a little prayer booklet um, in honor of uh, Mother Mary Catherine McCauley. Aww. Oh, that's 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 yeah, awesome. That's that is awesome. Uh, the new St. Joseph's Infirmary ceremony. This must this must have been the order. The prayer. These are the prayers, I think, maybe, and a description of the building. This was probably handed out and prepared uh, for, for the event for the for the ceremony of the laying of the cornerstone, or the opening of the building. No, it had to be in the cornerstone. <coughs> oh, the original. That's, that's the original. That's the original. That's the kind that they built on later. Yeah. A postcard. I have a painting of that. Yeah. It was colored pink. Nice. The hospital was pink. One pink. cent. To the one, one cent. <laughs> yes. Okay. And we have some medallions in okay. here. Religious medallions. <coughs> and they're in really, really good condition. Those are those are amazing. Silver dime. Silver dime. Amazing how what good shape these are in. They did a very good job of sealing, sealing the box. That's a quarter. No half dollar, but we do have we do have several religious medals that are in here. All right, that's it. That's everything. We've done. As I said, we, we're going to we're going to put together a permanent display. It may take a little while, but in, hopefully, we'll have it set up uh, over around the chapel area, and so that people can come by and, and see the cornerstone and then see the contents. Um, we'll we'll curate all of this. We'll make have pictures made and document it all, and and make it available to folks to see.
So thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Right. We're going we're gonna to close, yes. close with Crystal Bohan. So thank you, guys. I'm Crystal Bohan, Vice President of Operations for the hospital. Didn't hear about 10 years, so I don't go anywhere for the quite as far back as Teresa and some of our friends, but I surely do appreciate the heritage and our mission here. And thank you so much for coming, whether you're a community member or our own coworkers and sharing in this heritage and the ministry with us. We plan to, like Dr. Ross said, be here for another 130 years. So we, we appreciate the collaboration and you showing up for us at this special time. So everyone, like I said, we can come up and view the artifacts that we have here. And there's a few snacks in the back. So um, thank you again for coming. Thank <laughs> you.